Hello everyone. It's nice to have an opportunity to tell you about some of the work we've been doing. Uh, this presentation I call Reintegrating Manure and Cover Crops with Low Disturbance Tillage. And I say reintegrating because years ago when we had mixed farms, these things generally were integrated. They were one, part of a farming system. But as we've specialized and gotten away from mixed livestock cropping systems, uh, this uh, this approach to soil health and, and managing our soil resources has sort of dropped by the wayside, but we've been working with it now for quite a few years, looking at different ways to integrate manure and cover crops. What I'll talk to you about today is one particular method uh, that we've been working on that I call slurry seeding. The goals of this project were to combine seeding of a cover crop a manure application and aeration tillage, a low disturbance aeration tillage in one operation. And also uh, to have a process that would be no-till compatible with manure. And that's always been a bit of a challenge with us is to integrate no-till or really reduced tillage operations and manure applications because manure tillage has typically been used to incorporate manure. Also to build soil health, there's a lot of interest in that. Now, low disturbance tillage and manure are important parts of that. And with this combination of low disturbance tillage, cover crops, we certainly can improve infiltration and protect water quality and prevent runoff. When we use slurry seeding, we, we place seed, the cover crop seed, directly in the tank, in the slurry tank, and use our agitation with the PTO pump to keep that in suspension and then we apply those two together. So it's really a, a, an enriched, a nutrient enriched slurry. We use aeration tillage to open up the surface and allow us to get the seed into protected microsites as I call them. And so the, the seed laden slurry is dropped directly into the fractured soil that's behind the aeration tines. So we're not placing it on the surface. And this seed-laden slurry then is carried to seed, what I call seed-protected microsites, below the surface, not on the surface, not too deep. We're not covering the soil, and uh, we're using no additional tillage. And it actually has worked surprisingly well for us. I have a short video I want to show, about uh, three or four, probably four, maybe five minutes, of a slurry seeding process at Blight Farms. This is uh, following wheat harvest in early August uh, in Albion, Michigan, so that's South Central Michigan. These are replicated strip trials, 40 acre field, and it was done in early August. The seeding was done with swine slurry that was applied at about 4,000 gallons per acre, and the soil was a Kalamazoo loam. It was a, somewhat of a coarse uh, texture loam soil. We used aeration tillage to loosen and fracture the soil. That's the only type of, of tillage we did. We seeded a number of cover crops, oats at two bushels per acre, oilseed radish at 12 pounds per acre, turnips at two pounds per acre. We made five comparisons in our strip trials and they were each replicated three times. One was we simply no-till drilled the oilseed radish. And then we wanted to integrate the manure, so we used aeration tillage and we, we applied manure directly over the top of that drilled crop on the same day. We also slurry seeded oil seed radish, so that was where we put the seed directly in a tank, applied it with the slurry, a one-pass operation. We also made a comparison using no-till drilled oats and turnips combination, and then manure was applied over the top the same day with aeration tillage. Then we slurry seeded the oat turnip com um, combination, and we also had a control that was a wheat stubble, manure alone, no cover crop, um, basically just a, a no treatment control.
So when we use slurry seeding, this is a seed bed. It's, um, it's a one-pass operation. The slurry, seed-laden slurry, is carried directly down into the loosened and fractured soil. And I think you can see that we really don't want to do any additional tillage uh, after this because if we close the surface up with subsequent tillage, certainly it's locally saturated. We could end up with uh, um, anaerobic conditions and locally toxic conditions that would not be good. Uh, for the seed germination and growth. So we just leave it open, the seed, uh, the slurry infiltrates, and we find that we have a fairly good take on our cover crops. The aeration tillage creates these cracks and fissures in the soil, and that is what creates the protected sites for seed germination and growth. We do that by using drop tubes to direct the seed below the surface, but the seed bed is left open. So the seed beds, the, the drop tubes direct the seed directly behind where the aeration tillage have loosened the soil. And then the seed is protected from these wide swings in temperature and moisture that cause problems with no-till seeding in, in these types of conditions. That's why we can't simply broadcast seed on the surface in the summer and expect to get a good stand. But with this, we're dropping it down into, into the fractured, loosened soil, and it's below the surface, yet the surface is not covered, and the seed is not placed too deep. So it's, this is really important. Uh, surface placement will be too hot and dry, and we, can, we will not get a good stand uh, if you do that. And on the other hand, with tillage, perhaps some tillage could be suitable, but with tillage, many seeds are going to be buried too deep, and uh, the conditions will not be favorable for emergence and the success will not likely be too great. So in our work we've seen seed placement and emergence uh, from a number of uh, three four inches below as long as the seed wasn't buried and, and the seed bed wasn't consolidated but we see that this this process really mimics a more natural process where for instance, uh, consider a weed, a seed pot on a weed where the, these seeds are dropped onto the ground 
and then either carried by wind or water to cracks and fissures where they're protected by being below the surface or a little bit of residue cover the, covers those and they take root from there. So it's, a, it's a, an open seed bed and it mimics this natural seeding process. And we've seen uh, seeds emerging from variable depths, sometimes as much as three or four inches, um, but they're, they have access to the atmosphere and they're not covered. They're not consolidated below uh, at that depth, but they're taking root at that depth. Now, we did our earlier seeding that I showed you at the Blight Farms. Now, a year earlier, we went through this process where we compared both daikon radish um, and, uh, and, and, and forage turnips. We did a slurry seeding, and then we did uh, a no, simple no-till drilling of the same crop. And you can see here, if we look at the daikon radish, uh, compared it on the top, where we slurry seeded it, we had 3.6 tons per acre, a very vigorous stand of, uh, of radish. And if, at the bottom, where we did not apply it with manure, the, we had about one-third the yield. We drilled it, no manure, 1.2 tons per acre versus 3.6 with a slurry seeding. Forage turnips, uh, not quite the, as great a dif difference, but we had more than two times the yield. Where we slurry seeded these uh, with swine slurry, we had 2.8 tons per acre of slurry seeded, and where we simply drilled those into wheat stubble behind the, uh, the harvested crop, uh, we had 1.2 tons per acre. And you can see the, the biomass is uh, noticeably different there. So in our work, we've seen many benefits by combining low disturbance tillage, manure, and cover crops. And a lot of those have to do with simply combining operations. We're encouraging folks to include cover crops in their cropping systems now for the soil health benefits. But when folks have livestock, it's, it's a real challenge because these things need to be seeded at times a year when there's many other operations that need to be done. Harvesting, corn silage, for instance, other, or other harvest of field operations are starting. And we're look, really looking to combine these operations and uh, to promote more timely field operations. From an environmental standpoint, we're capturing and cycling these crop nutrients. So we're reducing the fertilizer cost and also creating a more vigorous crop. Uh, if we look at this combination of reducing tillage intensity and providing cover crops, so we have uh, an active root system growing throughout the year. Uh, we're improving soil health and, and crop yield. We're improving infiltrations. That's one thing I really like about this aeration tillage. We're improving infiltration, reducing runoff and erosion, protecting water quality. As at the blight farm, as Ken Blight has noted, there's reduced needs for herbicides and insecticides because the cover crops actually are giving him uh, additional benefits in weed control from some of the winter annuals that, that uh, emerge early in the spring. And also, we are also conserving soil moisture because we're not doing the, the extensive tillage at any, at any time of the year. So this whole process of reintegrating manure and cover crops, there are many benefits to this. We have manure, when we have manure and cover crops, are, they're simply great companions. And we see that cover crops do much better when uh, we apply them with manure. And in fact, as we've looked at crop yields and, and soil health indicators, we've seen that when manure and cover crops are applied together, we have a better response than we do with either cover crops alone or with manure alone. So from a soil health standpoint, there's some, some benefits to be had there. Now, I've focused pretty specifically on, on mainly on one process for integrating manure and cover crops, and that's slurry seeding. Now, the drawback to this is it requires a specific machinery set. We've looked at a number of ways to combine manure and cover crops, and I think and there are many ways that we can do this. It's a little, a little more challenging to combine them into one operation. But uh, I think if we keep in mind the conditions that the crop needs and the, the seed needs for germination emergence, there are many opportunities to, to really combine these two. But I think the key thing is we need to give, give the seed a chance. And by that I mean 
in contact manure is okay. The only crop that I am aware of, and we've tried many, that we've had a challenge with in terms of contact, contact between the seed and manure is, is crimson clover. Everything else is uh, done very well. But the key is give the seed a chance. We don't want it too deep because if we put it too deep and we, particularly if we come back behind and, and try some tillage to make the seed bed look a little better, we're probably not creating better conditions for the seed. On the other hand, we don't want it on the surface because if it's on the surface, the seed is subject to wide swings in temperature and moisture. And we have a lot of experience uh, to back up the fact that we're not going to get a very good crop. That's, uh, that's a real challenge uh, for any seed to germinate under those conditions. So with slurry seeding, we've really got over that by uh, using aeration tillage, creating uh, protected microsites, and using the slurry to carry the, both the nutrients and the seed down below the surface where it's somewhat protected, but not closed. So even at uh, uh, two inches below the surface, the seed still experiences a, a protected sur shallow seed bed. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to discuss it. You can contact me. Here's my email address. I'm at Michigan State University, and I'd be happy to discuss this with you at any time. Thank you.